Yes, hi, my name is uh, Mary Beryukov, and I do not have multiple sclerosis, but I have twin brothers who do. So that makes it a very personal and, and, and a huge family issue. There's a lot of uh, controversy uh, about multiple sclerosis right now and a new theory called CCSVI. So I'm going to do a short presentation to, to show some of the uh, issues that, that surround this. And I'm going to do it in the form of a concept map because from my uh, teaching background, a concept map summarizes the issues very clearly. The question that we're going to be focusing on, and hopefully at the end you'll be able to answer, is who will stop this discrimination and pain against the MS citizens? So let's look first at the old theory, the current theory, which is an autoimmune disease. And this basically means that they're using or talking about nerve cells or neurons in the brain. Uh, they get inflamed and they start to demyelinate. So this protein coating around the axon starts to get destroyed, uh, which causes a reduction in transmission of signals. And that gives you all the uh, deficits in, in uh, physical and mental activities in, in MS. They say that this is caused by an immune attack. The actual immune system is attacking the nerve cells. Very complicated. Now, the people in charge of this are the neurologists because they are the specialists in the central nervous system. And their whole job, basically, is to how, how to modulate the immune cells so they stop attacking the myelin. There's also, uh, the only way that they can do that currently is by using drugs. Drug therapies, these are expensive. There's a cascade of side effects from them. They're continually inventing new ones. And uh, so far, there's very limited results from, from using a... a a group of drugs. The pharmaceutical companies, of course, get involved because this is where they do their randomized trials and their research uh, to create these chemical agents, which, which explains why they need these trials, because a lot of them are chemotherapy agents. And their profit margins are billions of billions of dollars per year. The other player in this, in this uh, autoimmune disease uh, way of thinking is the MS Society. And they draw their scientific advisors from the neurologists, because this is their only game in town. Obviously, they have a vested interest, financial interest, to keep this theory going. And they do lobby and create uh, uh, awards for research. But guess who? Who gets these awards? Again, it's the neurologists. Sort of an interesting uh, um, advent that, that happened is to realize that you know, the MS Society has uh, information that they deal to Health Canada, and Health Canada funds research to the Canadian Institute of Health Research as well. That's part of their, they, they, these, these people advise Health Canada. Interestingly enough, the neurologist is the head of this committee right now. Uh, they have done something like $45 million worth of MS drug research. The question here is, so what are the consequences? What are the results? Like, how, how, how has this helped MS patients? Interestingly, there's a, a Pfizer Canada representative on this committee. You have to assume what role this person plays. So recently, when they had, were requested by Health Canada to do some funding for this new theory, uh, they absolutely turned it down. And, and that's understandable because this is what I call the fortress mentality. It's very hard to break through that. Problems that they have, they say, well, there's no evidence that the new theory works, so there's no treatment allowed. But if you're not having any treatment, of course you're not going to have, it, have uh, no evidence. So it's, it's a, a catch-22 uh, stall tactic for them. They're saying, yeah, maybe we should do some more clinical trials, but, but they're not doing the treatment. They're just looking at images, and that doesn't prove anything. You're not going to get any results by looking at pictures. Testimonials. Uh, currently, they say, are basically placebo because they're, they're outside the, the scientific uh, study. Well, they're not doing studies, so how, how can we possibly have proper testimonials? Randomized studies, they say yes, but it may take us 10 years. And anybody who knows MS people, no, they do not have a luxury of, of time on their side. So let's look at the, the new theory. The new theory is called CCSVI. And uh, the long term for it is chronic cere cerebrospinal venous insufficiency. And the whole focus here is that proper blood flow matters for everybody. So this new theory says this is a vascular problem. And 
the reason we get MS symptoms is because of blocked or irregular veins. So if you do a venoplasty, which is basically putting a, a balloon inside the restricted area and, and opening it, you are going to have relief of symptoms. Vascular surgeons and interventional radiologists are the, are the specialists who can do this. There is worldwide research and worldwide clinics that are showing the direct relationship between CCSVI and multiple sclerosis. I have 90%, but in many cases it's even a higher correlation. Clinical improvements with improved blood flow or open veins are undeniable. And there's nothing like that that, that drugs can do for people. So here's a big question. If you have MS and CCSVI, there's no treatment allowed in Canada. But it only makes sense. If you, if you have, I know you don't have to be a, a cardiovascular specialist here, but if you have problems in your arteries, you want, you want to have them cleared out, it's called an angioplasty. If you have problems in, in your veins, you also want to have them cleared out so that, so that you have a proper balance of blood flow and no reflux. But if you have, and this is commonly done for, for most people that have this condition, but if you have MS and also block veins, no treatment is allowed. So, so this, this, is, this is unbelievable that this is happening in our country. Solutions? Yes, solutions can be, can be realized with compromise, where doctors are willing to shake hands rather than you know, pound an iron fist to say, well, this is the way I want to have it done. Because this is a complex problem that nobody really understands. Do research, but do it with treatment. So you're actually opening up these veins, and then do follow-up studies to see how improvement happens or what else you can do to help improvement. Always stress intervention before drug arsenal or before, before using drugs. I mean, this is just how it has to be done. If you have a biological problem, fix it, and then move on to drugs if you need to. Imagine the amount of money you could save. If this is a $1,500 procedure, a walk-in clinic, versus the 20000 to 30000 or more dollars per year annually for one MS patient for drugs. Unbelievable. And it's time that we start to merge disciplines. So if you have a, a diagnosis of MS, yes, you can, you can talk to your neurologist about nerves, but also talk to a vascular surgeon to see if maybe your veins are, are, are blocked and, and you need those to be open. Talk to physiotherapists to get your muscles coordinated. The new reality is that this is the internet age, um, people are advocates for themselves, uh, believe that they deserve a second opinion, and the advancement of any scientific theory is, is ongoing ra rather than, than uh, establishment. So in the end, uh, you can see, in summary, that there's really you know, two very different theories here. Uh, one, because it's electrical conduction of nerve cell messages, we call this an electrical problem that neurologists count. But on the other hand, and by the way, these guys have done 40, 50 years of this kind of research, billions of dollars, and what are the consequences of all this research for, for MS uh, benefits? On the other hand, you know, you look at it as a vascular problem, which is more of a plumbing issue. You know, the veins are plugged, so open them up and, and get the results that, that everybody can enjoy by having proper blood flow. In closing then, uh, with this question, uh, who will stop discrimination and pain, I think we can more or less see that this group here, this fortress mentality, they have a lot of vested interest here to make sure that people don't necessarily get better too fast. Pharma, pharma doesn't make money on simple uh, venoplasties. So what we need to do, uh, rather than rely on these people, is I believe we, we need to be our own patient advocates. Uh, we need to call doctors, we need to write articles, we need to speak to editors, and, and just say, look, we, we have to do something about the discri dis discrimination. Uh, we need to put doctors back on the front page, on, on the stage here for be better health and for Canada. Um, you can get a lot of resources at uh, get help at telus.net. Uh, get help at telus.net. Another good video that you can share uh, if you go into YouTube, in the struggle and stop this discrimination and pain against uh, MS Canadians. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to comments or questions.